Historically, one of the leading popular tourist destinations of Southern California, Venice Beach is a beachfront district on the west side of Los Angeles. It is popular for its breezy beaches, canals, and waterfront performances. <laughs> With its sunny weather, cascading water waves of the Pacific Ocean, happy sailors from the four corners of the world, and free street shows, an unfamiliar eye will mistake Venice Beach for a rare treasure island. But that is not the case. Venice Beach actually harbors a deep, dark secret. A big fall from the grace of God. Behind its numerous milling crowds and busy petty traders, Venice is taken over by great sin and the powers of darkness. <laughs> Satan works and lives in Venice Beach, with the local dwellers serving him daily. A self-appointed society spokesperson, also known as Psychic Mermaid, this street tout explains what he believes is the way to go. I am the Psychic Mermaid. Go by the definition. Go by the Bible. I know, but the Bible, the Bible says no fornication. Oh. And it says marriage is to be honored by everybody. But who's married? A shocking endorsement of sin. Christ. Strutting around with a placard announcing his trade, this semi-naked streetwalker shamelessly reveals his dealings in marijuana, the addictive weed drug. Work for weed. So you sell it to other people? I help other people out. But that's a drug. Uh, I said I help other people out. You don't fear being arrested? According to medical findings, marijuana is a mind-altering or psychoactive substance. It has dangerous chemical components, including tetrahydrocannabinol, and over 400 poisons that change the way the brain works. Some of its chemical components are known carcinogens, or cancer-causing substances. When in Venice Beach, it doesn't take long for a discerning Christian mind to witness the general nonchalant attitude towards drug abuse here. This chain-smoking gangster admits to using weed to escape from reality. Smoking? Are you smoking weed? What are you smoking? Cigarettes, just tobacco. But that's dangerous. I smoked a little bit of that earlier, though. Weed? Weed, of course. Why? My family always has. It's just been what my family's always done. You like smoking weed? I like smoking weed, yeah. Do you know it alters your mind? Yes, yes, yes. It's a really good... It's a, if you um, if you have a tendency to like put like things in pictures and stuff like that, it's a really good hallucinogen. It's fun. It helps you uh, see things. But then that means that your brain is being damaged. It's true. It's not a good thing. And it's like growing up doing it your whole life because it just tells you... It puts you in a, in a false sense of reality. But it's fun to do. It helps the time go by. This young teenage boy makes a living out of having his body abused. He says he has no other means to earn a living. Surprisingly, he uses his painfully made meager earnings to indulge in further bodily harm. He purchases marijuana to feed his enormous addiction to the dangerous weed drug. Kick me and get my butt. For, <laughs> for what? A dollar. Why don't you do other business? Because I can't. Don't you think being kicked for money is being abused? What do you do with that money? <laughs> you smoke some of the money? I smoke some of the money. What? Cigarettes and, and weed. <laughs> you need Jesus. Okay? okay? When you get Jesus, you won't need any of that pain. Do you know Jesus? Yeah. 
He's the Son of God and He will give you blessings. You don't need to be kicked. Okay? Think about it. Okay? The pungent whiff of the weed smoke in the air. The stone-faced drug abusers all paint a picture of a terrible waste of minds. Drug havens operating as legalized medical marijuana clinics indiscriminately sell weed in full view of the general public. The lewd picture displays in the weed clinics in no way disguise who their ignoble target is. Any addict that can part with some cash. There is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. There is nothing kept secret that will not come to light. No need for introductions. The direct marketing of the weed drug to passers-by speaks for itself. So, what does the government say? Possession of larger amounts of marijuana is a misdemeanor punishable by up to $500 and six months in jail. However, under Proposition 36, first and second time possession offenders may demand a treatment program rather than jail. <laughs> With California nicknamed the gang capital of America <laughs> and an estimated 120,000 gang members this most populous state of the United States has yet to win the war against drugs. The great irony is that the same authorities fighting against illegal possession of drugs are the same ones that authorize controversial cannabis shows. With authorized peddlers selling the addictive weed in public places, one wonders what kind of control government really has over recreational buyers. It is no wonder that users get high under the very nose of the police. Paradoxically, the same police use public funds to rescue wasted drug users when tragedy strikes. And sometimes it is too late. Venice Beach, Satanism is the order of the day. Zoom. 
Zoltar, the infamous gypsy soothsayer, has been immortalized in a glass box, telling people's fortunes day and night. Black magic shops are rampant, as is atheism and other world religious beliefs. In this society, non-biblical spirituality is accepted and highly sought after by the young and old alike. Under the so-called freedom of worship, many souls have succumbed to the lies of Satan. <laughs> Religious objects and talisman are sold and adorned with pride. It is a fashion statement to be seen wearing these non-biblical objects. Talking of fashion, some locals have opted for complete nudity as a way of life. Are you naked? I always see you and you have no clothing on. Oh. I always see you naked. Yeah, so. it's the beach. The time? Venice is like that. Some people, they have shorts, but they disappear in the back. They don't have nothing but a little string. While some folks say the atmosphere of the beach calls for scanty clothing in the form of double shaka bikinis, it is not hard to see that nudism is more than a basic attempt to beat the heat wave. the enemy's heat wave has taken over the minds of the locals, turning them into willing workshops for the devil's agenda. <laughs> 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? In this society, the Antichrist is in vogue. Massachusetts, Connecticut, Iowa, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Washington, D.C. have all endorsed homosexual marriages, a visibly defiant stand against God's law.
Dr. Paul Cameron of Family Research Institute has documented shocking medical evidence resulting from homosexual acts. The lethal list includes sexually transmitted disease in 70% to 78% of homosexuals, intestinal parasites, worms, flukes, amoeba, ruptured rectums, fecal leaks and incontinence, high HIV AIDS rates, and less than 2% survival to old age. The typical sexual practices of homosexuals are a medical horror story of infections, complications, and horrid biological tragedies. Like what the Almighty God did to the offensive Sodom and Gomorrah, the medical findings about this deviant lifestyle grimly remind us of the harrowing fate the ungodly must face. And this unnatural, life-threatening lifestyle is to be spotted in Venice Beach where various homosexual pairs flaunt their ungodly acts in full view of the public. One Corinthians six verses nine to ten. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor idolaters, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God.